Why does every story, myth, movie, legend, tale you've ever been told always relate back to the stories from the Bible, and more specifically the stories of the Nephilim, like derived from the Book of Enoch? The stories of the giants that were born out of the women and the angels mating with one another. Everything in your world, everything around you, relates to these stories. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, let's just start with the story of Peter Pan, for example. See, you think Peter Pan was a story made up by some man who, by the way, is a child molester. And you can look up the terrible story of finding Neverland that make him out to be like a good guy. But when you read the real story, one of the children that he ended up adopting ended up killing himself. He killed himself due to being mentally disturbed as a result of the abuse that the creator of Peter Pan did to him, as well as writing him very strange, disturbing letters and saying terribly obscure things. Look up the disturbing truth. And why does Disney take these terrible stories written by terrible people and fantasize them into wonderful concepts of joy and loving memories? Now, Peter Pan, the man-child who goes into rooms and kidnaps children and takes them to Neverland, also carries around with him a fairy. Now, let me give you a little bit of history about the goat god Pan, the original kidnapper. You see, the word kid does not mean a name for your children. Kid, specifically, is the children of the goat. And who are the children of the goat? Oh yeah, God would separate the sheep from the goat, the goats being the seed of Satan. Yeah, the seeds of Satan are called the kids. Your children are not kids. Kidnappers doesn't mean kids are being taken. It's like the word alien abduction. You see, are aliens the ones being abducted? No, aliens are doing the abducting. Doesn't matter if you're a child or an adult, you can still be kidnapped. It's not adult napping. You see, the word kidnapping means the kids are doing the napping. And who are the kids? Oh, the kids are the goat god children, the seed of Satan, the children of the goat. Okay, this is Baphomet. This is Pan, the goat man, the half goat man. You see, when Pan would show up to places, people would panic. Panel, the Arabic derivation. This is where we get the word panic. Because when people saw the goat god Pan, they would freak out, they would panic because they knew he would kidnap you, take you away, kill you, eat you, and grape you. You see, this is why he's called Peter Pan. You see, the word Peter actually became synonymous with a phallic term in 1902. And what year did the story of Peter Pan come out? Oh yeah, right around the same time. Isn't that fascinating? And that's why if you look up many of the depictions of the goat god Pan, he always tends to have his Peter sticking out because he's a grapist. This is where the term comes from. It's also where we get the word pandemonium or pandemic. The root derivation is derived from the goat god Pan who creates chaos. He's also the Lord of the fairies. Huh, isn't that interesting? The goat god, the lord of the fairy. Oh yeah, Peter Pan walks around or flies around with a fairy. Isn't that fascinating? Oh, and let's just talk about Tinkerbell. You see, Tinkerbell gets her name from the Tinkers. The Tinkers were a group of nomadic people that were magical, like fairy-esque, dwarf-esque people who would go around working on people's pots and pans and metals. They had an ability to manipulate metallurgy that was learned from the fallen angels that taught men metallurgy. And this is where you get the term, I don't give a tinker's cuss or a tinker's curse. It's actually a famous quote referring to the fact that the tinkers were a demonic or magical type of individual that worked with fairies and wicked creatures to curse people. But they also worked on your pots and pans and traveled around because they had an ability to manipulate metal. This is where Tinkerbell gets her name. It's derived from the tinkers that worked on metal and bells. And just to clarify, fairies were never good. They were wicked, evil, perverted, genetically modified creatures made by fallen angels and humans and animal creations mixed together to create these beings that would kidnap children as well, kill them, eat them, and do terrible things, okay? Terrible, they were evil, wicked creatures. Disney made them to somehow be good. But throughout all of human history, only until very, very recently, Fairies were always seen as very evil and bad. Oh yeah, and let's not worry about the shadow that Peter Pan loses, because shadows getting away from you are a good thing, guys. Don't worry about the shadow in your room, it's just Peter Pan's shadow. It's not a demonic entity watching you. 
like many children have experienced growing up in their room, seeing the shadow in your room. So that shadow is designed to make it into a friendly thing. You see, Disney tried to make all the concepts of the occult into friendly terms. No, Peter Pan is the goat god Pan who would grape people and kidnap children, eat them, and do terrible things to them. And he would take them away to Neverland. Why Neverland? Well, it's really interesting that it's called Neverland because the word Nephilim has this prefix, Nef. And it's very fascinating because a lot of things attached to the word Nephilim will carry this prefix Nef at the beginning of the word. Like for instance, Nefertiti's, if you notice by the way, is not fully human. She has a very strange skull because she's a Nephilim. Also is related to Nefer Nefer, Nefer Tum, Nefer Otep, Nefer Oskep. These are all names of Nephilim related beings. See, this is why Peter Pan takes the children to Neverland or Neferland. Oh, it's Neferland, not Neverland. And what happened to the women that created the Nephilim? Oh yeah, in the Book of Enoch, it says they were turned into sirens or mermaids, like Mermaid Lagoon. And what is it with the Lost Boys all being animal-human hybrids or just wearing animal skin outfits? Oh, and interesting, the Nephilim were known as giants that would eat people. Oh yeah, Cannibal Cove is also a place in Neverland or Neferland. Oh, and you can read Native American stories about the six-fingered giants and people that had six fingers that were deformed would eat people, just like the six-fingered giants in the Bible. And in fact, the Native Americans held up their hand and said, how, how, as in how many fingers did you have? They would want you to show their hand so they could see how many fingers you had because they knew that the six-finger people were related to the cannibal giants. You see, everything in the story of Peter Pan was designed specifically to distort history, to pervert and distort every story of history relating to the stories of the Nephilim connected to the Bible so that you don't believe the Bible and so that you don't understand the truth of your history. You follow the star till morning, the morning star. Oh yeah, isn't that a name in the Bible referred to as Satan? Sure is. Yeah. Now, did the pedo man who wrote the story of Peter Pan 100% fully know all of these terms and these understandings of the occultic principles of Nephilim? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe he was just influenced by the spirits of the Nephilim, the dead entities. Maybe he was channeling. Maybe he didn't really even write it. Maybe he was doing a form of automatic writing and created this story. Either way, all of the stories in your world reflect back to the understanding of the Nephilim. The man who wrote the story was very wicked and evil and involved in some very dark, disturbing things. Now, why would Disney take this and fantasize it and turn it into something glorious and wonderful? It's because they're a part of the occult. There's a part of the agenda. And their agenda is to distort the biblical context and history of God so that you don't recognize what evil and wickedness actually is. It's designed to pervert your perspective of truth and of God and of history. All of it. It's been that way from the beginning. Even the things you think are innocent. If they're not paying homage and giving honor to the Lord, who are they giving honor to? And where is the inspiration for these things coming from? You see, the occult run the world. And they weasel their tentacles and their lies and their agendas into everything around you so that you're normalized to it, so you don't recognize it. They do this on purpose to take you away from the Lord. You see, everything in your world truly revolves around God and the Bible and the stories of the Nephilim, whether you believe in it or not.